Roma art, an epistemic, political, and institutional achievement. Before I start uh, the lecture, I would like to make two notes. First, I would like to express that I have learned so much from the Barvalipa lectures and speaking in this distinguished group of experts addressing potentially future Roma students of the online university is a real challenge and a humbling experience for me. The second note is uh, that I will not have the time and capacity to read out all the footnotes that I have in the lecture, which will later be available through the Barbaripa University. As a result of the research into the Roma image in the history of art, we can conclude that the imaginarium, the imagination, which condenses Roma into the iconography of the stranger, pagan or hated, alien, thief, evil and ugly, already developed in the 15th and 16th century in the Northern Renaissance. Further studying the art of the 19th century, we find that in the Central and Eastern European panoptic regime of modernity, Roma became the pandans, the equivalents of Western Europe's African and Asian primitives. While Western artists traveled to faraway destinations such as Tahiti, the Caribbean islands, or built artist camps in Aix-en-Provence or in the south, Central, Eastern, and Southern European artists traveled to their exotic locations. The closest to them was the nearby Roma settlement. We may also see how the Roma body is criminalized, sexualized, and feminized, similarly to the black body in European modernity. And that the history of numerous contributors, models, artists, proteges of Roma origin is untold and forgotten. As a result, European art history forced Roma into the conceptual ghetto of the gypsy outcast. Roma subalternity, this burden of being the other, as Chakrabarti Spiva condensed in her philosophy, and the physical, symbolic, epistemic violence, in other words, the colonizing act of European majorities towards the Roma, is the most visible and evident in the visual field. Thus, exploring the desires of the Roma subalterns through visuality is a transformative and inspiring field for the next generations of researchers, intellectuals, artists, and art, art historians of Roma origin. Any intervention by Roma into this conflicting image in the history of art can be understood as counterculture. In the second part of the 20th century, for the first time, creative Roma writers, artists, and film directors were making self-representations and finally forming a common transnational platform. After the first World Romani Congress in 1971, Roma writers and artists started to claim recognition as a group. Until this time, Roma productions were represented as not being the work of individual authors, but rather as collective facts of nature, which only became a concrete representation when they were in some way presented by an art collector or folklorist. Until the late 1970s, the support of the creative activity of Roma in Europe has been provided by minority organizations or admirers of outsider art, naive paintings, collectors, ones who essentially considered Roma art an ethnographic phenomenon, paradoxically maintaining along the way the very peripheral position of such art. An event of historical importance marks the beginning of the Roma cultural movement in Europe. The 1979 first national exhibition of self-taught Roma artists organized by activist Agnes Dorozzi and hosted by the Pataki Cultural Center in Budapest. 
Dorothy's exhibition raised international awareness, generated fans and supporters for Roma culture, and had a long-lasting fertilizing effect on European Roma cultural production. Her work on this, pub uh, her work on this publication inspired Sandra Jaya, the French poet, writer, and painter, who organized Premier Mondial d'Artsikan at the Conciergerie in Paris in 1985. The results were discussed at the Third World Roman Congress in 1981 in Göttingen, where the Czech Roma activist Karel Holomek was also present, who was then the lead advocate for the establishment of the Museum of Romani Culture in the Czech Republic, and with Thomas Acton, Professor of Romani Studies of the University of Greenwich, who curated the first exhibition for Roma artists in the UK. By the early 2000s, the European Roma cultural movement raised active cultural theorists, and many of them specialized in the examination of Roma representation and cultural participation. In this decade, Roma artists have successfully participated in several international contemporary art events. Roma art began appearing in official spaces of contemporary culture. Just to mention a few of them, I refer here to the Second Sight exhibition at the Stephen Lawrence Gallery in 2006, uh, the Hidden Holocaust exhibition of Kunsthalle Budapest in 2004, the VR What We Are Aspects of Roma Life uh, in Contemporary Art uh, in uh, Graz, and in Galerie Nuya Bucharest, uh, and also to the exhibitions of the City Museum of Ustinad Ladem and the Minor Minoritan Gallery Graz around 2004. Roma art began appearing, as we said, in contemporary art spaces. The establishment of the first Roma pavilion at the 52nd Venice Contemporary Art Biennale in 2007 was a natural culmination of this process. The acceleration of the Roma art fields activities and the texts produced on Roma arts, culture, heritage, and self-determination simultaneously contributed to the Roma contemporary art terms institutionalization. While in 2006 the term was highly questioned by art historians and experts, by 2011 one could actually organize a comprehensive tour of international Roma contemporary art exhibitions and events. The number of exhibitions continued to grow with the activities of the Museum of Romani Boutique in Bucharest, the Romani Museum in Bruno and Belgrade, Gallery Kaidikas in Berlin and Gallery 8 in Budapest. We can count over 160 art events in Europe between 2007 and 2015. Through these precious moments, openings, exhibitions, performances, artistic acts, and different performances of celebrating Roma creativity, we may construct the notion of Roma art from the historical perspective. In this sense, we understand Roma art to be an important result of the Roma cultural movement. This connection between the Roma cultural production and the Roma cultural movement is circular. Every small product may it be a poem, a music, a composition, an assembly where an artistic act is performed, an artifact, and so on. They all contribute to building the oppressed, untold, and still invisible history of Roma belonging, a sense of community spreading throughout history, in other words, the Roma cultural movement. The legitimacy of Roma visual production is also affirmed by the need for Roma images in the fight against anti-Roma visual propaganda. From around 2008, we can also see the increasing number of paramil paramilitary organizations, racist and neo-Nazi groups and nationalist formations in Europe, and how they are using visual propaganda in their campaigns for increasing and disseminating anti-Roma hatred and violence. 
Their website and visual forces include new creatives to humiliate and objectify Roma. The photos on their propaganda consciously distort and manipulate the Roma subject until it is expedient for the eliciting of disgust and the maximum possible. In this oppressive, racist and fearful visual and physical environment, there is an even more important demand for Roma art which goes against the false Roma image. And the Roma art practice takes us one step further. The Roma artists, theorists, researchers are looking for creative, analytical and practical options to confront and delink from the colonial matrix of power. Roma art in the past two decades found ways to resituate both Roma and whiteness from its unspoken status. It can make whiteness visible by asserting its normalcy and transparency. Roma women artists offer models for how to construct new Roma woman identities. The works that operate with the power of humor are not simply spontaneous games or theatric self-exhibitions, but ritual performances which are formed under the pressure and influence of oppression, deploying the power of taboo and fleeing from the horror of exclusion. They use the subversive power of parody, the way Judith Butler suggests. Quote starts, they reject and change the laws in order to use them against those who created them. End of quote. The argument for the legitimacy and support of Roma artistic production based on Roma cultural rights is very often disregarded by the art world, while it is perhaps the most often debated and advocated by the Roma communities. Against the growing number of Roma cultural events around Europe, Roma tangible cultural heritage is in actual danger without preservation and conservation strategies, completely invisible and inaccessible to the public. Against the growing number of Roma cultural events around Europe, Roma tangible cultural heritage is in state collections. European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture has identified over 33,000 artifacts by Roma artists in European state collections, yet to date there isn't a permanent or regular temporary exhibition in these majority institutions where Roma art can be studied. Without the proper infrastructure, the cultural rights of the Roma minority are denied. The production, presentation and interpretation of Roma culture by Roma themselves is impossible in present-day Europe. The next generations are deprived of their own right to access Roma cultural heritage. The notion of Roma art, as we already mentioned, is often challenged. It is challenged as a term coined on essentialist prominence. Even to date, some scientists claim that Roma art does not exist or shall exist only temporarily. We agree. This temporary existence of Roma art is legitimate only until racism persists. If that moment of perfect equality, inclusion and recognition arrives, the notion of Roma art might not be relevant any longer. Until then, it is the most positive discourse. It is an act of recognition of Roma self-determination and one of the notions of highest gravity in the European Roma context. Roma art continues to serve as term as a notion for multiple ambitions. Number one, it celebrates Roma creativity and the precious moments of the Roma cultural movements, and it builds a Roma cultural genealogy. It aims for a productive intervention into the depiction of and presentation of Roma in art history. Number three, it is a counterculture against racist forces and anti-gypsyism. And finally, I must mention, we do not need to argue for the legitimacy 
of the notion of Roma art or Roma art itself as cultural production, self-representation, access to cultural heritage are the fundamental rights of the Roma minority. The recognition of Roma art is not essential only for Roma, but for the prosperity of majorities. Roma arts have capacity to reinvent how the majority art institutions, currently in mode of the crisis of reinventing themselves, relate to time, space, nature, and community by sharing the knowledge born out of Roma heritage and knowledge so utterly connected to the Roma history of survival and resilience, the successful strategies of transgenerational knowledge transfer, and the wise mechanisms of inspiring belonging, building a community while inviting universal participation. Roma creativity is conscious of our human interconnection with nature and the human planetary entanglement. We can finally conclude that the Roma cultural movement and its central notion, Roma art, has been one of the most efficient vehicles in the past four decades for the exploration of Roma subjectivities. It dwells into the deepest traumas and confesses the greatest aspirations, desires, and hopes to invent what it means to be a Roma in contemporary societies. Bell Hooks, African-American feminist critic, claims, beginning of quote, opposition is not enough. In the vacant space after one has resisted, there is still the necessity to become, to make oneself anew, end of quote. And in this hard labor over making ourselves anew, Roma art has the most vital and defining role.